Hello guys, in this video we will compare the 5 Marlin bikes from Trek which are the Marlin 4, 5, 6, 7 and finally the new flagship of the range which is the Trek Marlin 8. Everything I will say here will be with respect to models available in the United States and for a size medium. I will go through the frames of these bikes, talk about the differences in forks used, how the drivetrain varies among the models, give a brief summary as well as suggest alternatives you should look at from other manufacturers before buying the Marlins. But before we begin with the comparison, I would like to give a quick introduction on the Marlins. The Marlins are Trek's entry level XC mountain bikes aimed at those who are looking at a very rugged commuter bike or a mountain bike on a budget that can take on some serious cross country riding. Now while there are other more dedicated aluminium mountain bikes from Trek, if you are on a budget of less than $1200, the Marlins are a good way to start XC riding and learn some serious skills before spilling cash on more expensive bikes. The main thing shared between the Marlins is the frame. It is made from Trek's entry level alpha silver aluminium alloy featuring internal cable routing. As you may expect at this price, it does not have a tapered head tube nor is it dropper post ready. Coming to the most crucial differences between the 5 Marlins, we talk about the suspension fork. All the forks used here have 100 mils of travel. The Marlin 4 features an entry level SR Suntour XCE fork which uses coiled springs for dampening and has no turnkey lockout. The Marlin 5 and 6 receive an upgrade in this department to a SR Suntour XCT which while also coil sprung is stiffer and can be locked out so you can pedal more efficiently while climbing or on flats. The Marlin 7 comes with a RockShox Judy fork that also has a turnkey lockout. Even though it is coil sprung, it is significantly stronger and should last much longer on the trails as compared to the SR Suntour ones. The Marlin 8 for the first time introduces air dampening into the Marlin range with its RockShox Judy Silver Solo Air Sprung Fork. While it also comes with the usual turnkey lockout, it is also the only one here with rebound adjusters. Because it uses air, it is more expensive but at the same time much lighter, longer lasting as well as provides more versatility to adjust the dampening as per the trail due to its provision for rebound adjustment. The Marlin 4 uses Bontrager XR2 Com tires that are 2.2 inch wide at the front and 2 inches wide at the rear. The Marlin 5, 6 and 7 use Bontrager XR2 Com tires as well but this time they are 2.2 inch wide both at the front and at the rear. The Marlin 8 makes a major upgrade to Maxxis Ardent Race tubeless tires that are 2.35 inch wide at the front and 2.2 inches wide at the rear. Next we talk about the drivetrains of these bikes. The crank on the Marlin 4 is a 3 by Shimano Tourney 42x34x24 teeth one. The Marlin 5 upgrades this to a Shimano Altus 2 by crank with 36 teeth on the outer ring and 22 in the inner. The Marlin 6 uses a 1 by Pro Wheel 30T crank while the Marlin 7 uses a 1 by 28T FSA Alpha Drive crank. The 8 uses a SRAM SX Eagle 30T crank. The 1 by crank simplify riding in the trails as you have to only worry about shifting in the rear when it comes to riding off road. Talking about rear shifting, let's talk about the cassettes in these bikes. The 4 comes with a 14 to 28 Shimano 7 speed cassette. The 5 upgrades this to a 8 speed 1232 cassette. The Marlin 6 and 7 use a 10 speed Shimano Diore 1146 cassette. Now as expected with the widest range of any cassette here, the Marlin 8 comes with a 12 speed SRAM SX Eagle 1150 cassette. The larger the cogs at the back, the easier it is to climb up hills while smaller cogs are useful when putting down power on flats or even more so on downhills. While a specific component may be different, the drive trains on the Marlin 4 is based around a Shimano Tourney group set. The 5 upgrades this to a Shimano Altus group set while a Duo group set is used both for the Marlin 6s and 7. 
The Marlin 8 is built around a SRAM SX Eagle Grupo. Wheels on the 4, 5 and 6 are Bontrager connection ones with 20 mm of width while the 7 and 8 use lighter and stiffer Bontrager Kobe tubeless ready wheels with 23 mm of internal width. Now we'll come to alternatives of the Marlin range. But before that, we will give a brief summary of these bikes. If you are thinking about buying a rugged commuter bike, we would request you either to stretch your budget a bit and go for the Marlin 5 over the Marlin 4. Or if you cannot spend more than $600, we understand that. And you can look at some of the more value for money bikes we will talk about in the alternatives. While the Marlin 5 can be used in cross country trails, if you have the money, we would suggest to spend a bit more and get the Marlin 6 because its one by Diore drivetrain will make life much easier in the trails. Marlin 7 is better than the 6 in terms of wheels and the fork mainly. Finally, while yes, the Marlin 8 is the best Marlin here, we do think if you have $1200 to $1300 to spend on a mountain bike, that money is better spent on other bikes we will mention. While the SRAM SX Eagle group set is excellent, this is one of those instances where the group set overpowers the frame, which uses base level aluminium, doesn't have a tapered head tube, and is not dropper post ready. Alternatives to the Marlin range 4 through 7 include the Giant Talon, Specialized Rockhopper, Cannondale Trail, Diamondback Overdrive, and Polygon Extrada. The Talon and Rockhopper are alternative XC bikes, while the Cannondale Trail and especially the Polygon Extrada are much more trail oriented bikes which are suited to going downhill with a lower head angle. Alternatives to the Marlin 8 include the specialized Rockhopper Elite, Giant Talon Zero, Trek's own Excalibur 7 and Giant XTC SLR 29-2. While yes the latter bikes have inferior Diore group set instead of the SX Eagle, these two are made of a much higher grade of aluminium have tapered head tube and a dropper post ready. Hence, even if you have to pay $100 extra, in the long term, buying either of these two bikes makes much more sense, which will be magnified, especially when the group sets wear out and you are left with the frame, which in the case of the Excalibur or XTC, can accommodate much more expensive forks, as well as take much more of a beating in the trails and would never be overwhelmed by a great group set. I hope this video helped you decide which Marlin is right for your purpose. If you do have further queries or want me to do videos of other bikes, feel free to post in the comment section. Thanks a lot for watching this and do sub if you want to see more content like this. I'll see you next time.